Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Peasant Chat, that's right, coming at you on a Sunday for the poor people. Uh, prime time, so that more poor people can actually show up. Because we all know poor people don't get up in time to actually watch a show. They're lazy. They get up afternoon time on Sunday, and then they try to catch the replay later on. So I wanted to get on a little later to get more people on. So what I wanted to talk about uh, on today's Peasant Chat was the Street Alpha podcast. We did not really uh, kind of go over everything we talked about on the Street Alpha podcast. A lot of stuff was covered. Three plus, I would say, two hours and 45 minutes plus just of knowledge dropping non-stop stuff. Now, in the comments of that video, most of the stuff was positive. Of course, there's a couple of scragglers that don't know what the fuck they're talking about, and they're talking out of the side of their neck, and, you know, they want to talk some shit saying, like, I'm soft and all this other stuff, which I love. I love people saying that, but then the more the more they watch the video, the more they realize I'm coming from a good place. I'm coming from a knowledge-filled place. And did you watch the Street Alpha podcast? And learn stuff about me or stuff I knew that you probably didn't know on the show. I want to say no because I'd like to think that on this show, I give you guys everything I know depending on the subject matter. So we can kind of rehash the Street Alpha podcast. It's up to 110,000 views. That's pretty damn good on a week. I know the Dan Ruin Boosted Lucky stuff is going to go off because they have internet fame. But on my end, I'm more of a knowledge-based guy and give you two and a half plus hours of content so that we can go over that also the gray goose where does the gray goose go from here now it is in a weird spot because in order for it to go any further it's going to need better control of some of the stuff that's happening the stock computer can only do so much so eventually you're going to have to go okay does the gray goose lose some weight go standalone aka motec because they want to keep vct yes if the lungs are going to go uh, standalone, it will be a MoTeC. One, it more resembles what we tune with currently and keep VCT active and it can control the 6R80. VIT would have to go in there, make some tweaks because the Lund Racing has already tweaked 6R80 stuff for the Gen 2 uh, Mustang that they have in-house. We have a Gen 2 Mustang we call the Money Pit, and we vetted all the MoTeC stuff, 6R80 stuff on that, so that can get transferred over to the Grey Goose. Or do we just go 100% meth? Give it more fuel system because there's a couple of issues with the fuel system. But then what do we do? If this car runs 420s, where does it race? In the 8th. I'm talking about the 8th. If it runs 4, we think it went a 429 8th the other day, but we didn't get an 8th mile time because the, the clocks were fucked up. Someone ran over the little foam thingies and it was fucked up. You couldn't get a time. So we think we're in the low 430s, high 420s. So if the thing needs to lose another couple of hundred pounds, where do you compete? Turbos are too big. It's a modular, it's air to water, it's 6R80. You cannot use that as a uh, Band-Aid anymore or you cannot use that as a handicap because we have proven, Lund Racing has proven, that the 6R80 is right there with Turbo 400 stuff, Power Glide stuff in terms of durability. If anything, it's more durable and we don't have a lockup torque converter. So we can talk about that or we can also talk about overselling and underproviding. We can talk about everything. There was a case where a gentleman did the worst thing you could do with a Roush 2.3 car. He bought a Gen 3 R expecting to make more power on the same boost. That's right. He was on 10 PSI with the Roush blower, made 640 rear wheel horsepower. Then he said, let me upgrade to a Gen 3 R at 10 PSI, which is like a, a, a dinner plate for a pulley and goes, it is feels slow and i lost 30 horsepower alex please help we'll talk about all of that but not before mr bill o'reilly says hi to the peasants oh oh my god why isn't this okay you know what i gotta go back and do it all over again oh my god yeti nano here we go Oh yeah, there we go, much better. So, we got PMAS, that's right, we're gonna talk about the sponsors here. PMAS, thank you, PMAS, we're gonna try starting giving, doing the giveaway again on da -da 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 -da. Tuesday, try to give away a cold air intake. DNAHapPormance.com, every Whipple kit should be bought through DNAHapPormance.com. If you think you're gonna buy a Whipple kit, you don't go to anybody else, but DNAHapPormance.com, they also sell wheels, you name it, cold airs, you know, everything, every part you can think of, just go to DNAHapPormance.com. Calamer send mission. He is over and bone me in my folk meats. Ponies in the Smokies. Good luck to you if you went to that shit show. He's having a good time. Gonna come back, finish the Corvette transmission, get it back here. 
Part Farm, partfarm.com, Part Farm on Instagram, Part Farm everywhere. They are getting, getting, they're getting ready to send me a whole bunch of shit for the S197 body parts to get it back up to snub the Part Farm.com. Uh, we got Belak, that's right, Daniel Borato. Actually, I found out Belak is Caleb backwards. I guess his kid is named Caleb. So Belak, that's right, the best wheel for truck dealers. Jesus. MFP, MFP of Australia, and Two Auto Solution. Rami Zadon, Two Auto Solution in Puerto Rico, that's right, in Puerto Rico, getting everything done. He's actually been a little on the quiet side, and I worried for a little bit, but I think, I think he was just getting his money. I think he was just kind of going out there, building cars, staying quiet, because the people that are very vocal on the internet usually are not making money. Let's say hi to the people here, then we'll talk about probably the Grey Goose stuff or the Street Alpha podcast stuff, whatever you guys think is uh, prudent. <laughs> 2000 MCR, Joe Swiss, Gallo Bravo, Clean 93 GT, Leon Phelps on Home Solo, B. Le Rest, Money 540, EZR, 1 of 1 RTR, Ignacio Ramirez, Dixon. We got Ignacio again, left us hanging Thursday. We forgive you. Oh, Boyd got the D from Rob the Burglar. Hold the tune, Burglar says, Hey, peasants, getting it on three times with the tune, Burglar. Oh my God, see what happens when you get on our bad side? Our chat doesn't fuck around. Juby, JD, Coyote Fury, D Rock Fox, Josh Jones, S5 Filth, S5 Filthy? S5 Filthy, interesting. A Aaron, Robostar, Rodney B, El Patron de la Cerveza, Super Dead, Andy Ali, Coyote Fury, Carlos V, Ken Phillips, Yosef Baby, Daddy 96, interesting. Yosef Angel, Puerto Rico, Andrew Martin, 94 GT for Manic, Agent Orange, Oz Stang Metal, Elver Galarga, Colby, Yusuf, Menaldo. I got to turn this volume up. Paul Pontiu. Or maybe it's the earpiece. There we go. Venom Racing, Bossman, Five Boy Josh, Charlie Vega, Five S, uh, Mr. Filthy again. Jared Wells, NA, Black Betty, Abdul Alabasi, Dre Day, Bossman, Mad A, 956, K, AJ, Edu Martinez, Douche Did It, Giovanni, Cody Kyle, Aston Tyler, JT, Ezekiel Palacios, Palacios K, Yodi. Let's get all the way to the bottom. There's too many people to talk about here. Eminem, Brandon, Braden. Horton or Brandon Horton. Not so Turbo Hatch. Oh, Braden. Braden, are you the guy from um ESS? I, I'm not 100 percent Five Boy Josh, Jesus 5-0, or Jesus 5-0, Michael, Bilovesh, Lewis, Manuel Amador, Mini by Badman, Carlos, Master J, Craig Walls, Mr. Billet Noonan himself. So, Craig Walls, let's talk about the Grey Goose first. So the Grey Goose is now in that weird zone where turbos are too big for certain classes. Certain classes don't allow air to water intercoolers. Certain classes don't allow modular motors with a certain turbo size, with an air to water. So like the only thing the Grey Goose can run in terms of a global, uh, I want to say, um, a class would be LDR. Now this car is not LDR competitive, limited drag radial. That is... I think you can run up to a 315 or a 295 ET Street Pro on that, and you can run Q16 or a gasoline-based fuel, not ethanol-based fuel, and then you can run air to water, or you don't run an air to water and use 100% meth. Something tells me the Lunds are not going to remove the air to water intercooler from that car, so they're probably going to have to step down to Q16, do some of that vetting, try to mitigate some of the EGTs, and try to run somewhere because... We are located in a really good spot between Bradenton, Orlando, and SGMP, and um, what's the name of that fucking Gainesville? Right now, there's a drag radio event going on in Alabama, not super far from where the Lunds are located. And if you did want to make a trip to the Carolinas and work, work your way up there, there is just so much racing, so much racing around there where you can... What is going on here? So I, I don't know if there's an argument happening here. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat real quick, and people just tend to argue in the chat. So where did the Luns go from here? Well, in at, at World Cup, the World Cup, Jesus, at Texas 2K, what we had going on was this. We have ID2600s, we have a 7030 meth ethanol 1R mix, and we're starting to run out of injector. The injector duty cycle was up to 101%, and then we turned on the auxiliary injectors, which are controlled by an AMS2000, and they just basically are direct port meth injection for lack of a better word and they basically pulse and they brought down the injector duty cycle on the 2600s to about 60 percent but the control isn't exact it might have gone a a bit on the fat side so we need to work on that so either we stay with that and refine that and maybe work on the scavenging maybe work on the on the oil pump slash fuel system relocate the filter get some weight out of her stick to air to water and then run what fl2k world cup and texas 2k that's all that car kind of fits into the 
streetcar class. There's also things like the reunion at Bradenton that's happening in a couple of weeks, and I don't think the Luns are going to run anything for a long time because we are now understanding where we are basically what where do we live do we want to live in a class that seems to be unlimited and deal with the likes of 4140 cars okay 4140 cars are going to be super serious and do we then live in that sandbox do we then go okay let's chase those guys down or do we reconfigure the car to run something like an ldr limited drag radio and do about six events that are semi-local to us so I think you're not going to really hear much from the Grey Goose in terms of that because of that. One, Senior needs a break. He just needs a break. That car was built by him, thrashed on for Texas 2K. We made Texas 2K runner-up, no slouch, getting beat by Brett LaSala. There is no shame in that when you make it through a tough field of cars to a make it to two back-to-back finals and big events. But the problem is this. We're not going to do Drag and Drive. We're not going to do TX2K. It's too far. We're probably not going to do World Cup this year either too far. So where can we place the car? Now, someone like a Craig Walls could probably fit into certain classes. Um, I know Warriors classes have pretty tight rules, so you kind of have to live in that sandbox. And LDR is a complete reconfiguration of the vehicle. So that's going to be something to look out for with Lund Racing. So we can talk about that. Street Alpha Podcast. The audience, the target audience for Street Alpha Podcast is a younger audience. So the, so the younger audience... What are you talking about? Uh, in any RVW or non 2 stuff, it's an amateur setup. Okay, Reggie Black. Reggie Black, LDR is 394.0 cars. You don't think? You don't think a Coyote car? Reggie Black, you're going to eat those fucking words. If you think that no Coyote can compete in any class in RVW like LDR, you are going to eat those words, son. The Coyote in terms of development is right there and what they're gonna do in those rvw classes reggie is they're gonna seriously limit the coyote because let's say you think the coyote because now we're talking my language here let's say you think the coyote is not that serious of an engine you need to billet noonan for that you need to billet hemi for this you need to da 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 and all of a sudden because the coyote is only 302 cubic inches and you can put 60 or 70 pounds of boost through the bitch eventually you're going to start saying, whoa, 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 whoa. We got to limit the turbo size of these Coyotes. Why? If the Coyote is never going to compete in any of those style of classes, then why are you limiting anything of the Coyote? I think if the Coyote is allowed to do its thing in a 2,900-pound chassis, you don't think that car can run 4140? That's competitive. I know it's not 380s. I know it's not 390s. You don't think four O's is competitive for a 2,900 pound, 302 cubic inch coyote? And then you're going to start going, whoa, whoa, we got to limit the turbo size. We got to limit the air to water intercooler. We got to start limiting stuff. All of a sudden, stipulation, 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 stipulation. And that's the only way you can keep the coyote down by purposely handicapping it. Now, Lund Racing is self handicapping with the Turbo 400. You don't think if we shove a Turbo 400 in that car as it currently sits with, let's say, a 151st gear, 151.211, we're doing two-speed stuff with the 6R80. We are launching in second, rolling it out the back in third gear, no lockup on the torque converter. I repeat, no lockup on the torque converter. This is a Circle D, bitch-ass, 4M, welded, non-bolt-together deal, and it's running High 420s, low 430s. You don't think if we cut 200 pounds off the bitch, shove a turbo 400 in it, you don't think we'd be in the 4140 range eventually? Please stop. The only way the Coyote is not competitive in any of those classes is if the leagues themselves start putting things on it to slow it down and other racers are going to be mad. They'll say, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are you letting this thing do it? It's a 302 cubic inch motor. It can have whatever the fuck it wants. Whoa, whoa, that's fucked up. I got a billet deal here, big block deal, and this thing, yes, because the potential is great. So I wonder what, let's say Brett decided to configure his car for LDR. And then, actually, it's kind of there. I think turbo size is different. It has an air-to-air, and it's 100% meth as far as I know, but I don't know the configuration of that car 100%, only they know. So I think that'll be interesting. Back on Street Alpha Podcast. That podcast, I think, opened the eyes of a lot of younger guys that don't fuck with 
at all. Don't fuck with coyote stuff at all. That podcast seems to be geared towards um, the import side of things. And once he starts dipping his toe into the domestic side of things, it probably turned people off. Um, maybe my show opened up their eyes in terms of like, wait a minute, a small, because it's, I understand why a Hemi is fast. I understand why a Hellcat motor is fast. Big cubic inch, cam and block, a lot of boost party. And the, the real fast guys are twin turboing that setup. They're using the Whipple case as a heat exchanger. Listen to that. The Whipple, there's a guy with a um, track car. And he's out there saying, he's not talking positively about Whipple at all. He's actually talking that shit on Whipple. But he's using the Whipple supercharger case as an intercooler. Basically just either interchilling or just running it as a air to water intercooler like it does factory shoving turbos through it. And I thought that was a very interesting thing to do. Run it through with no rotors in the in, in the blower. No rotors. Take the rotors out. Seal the case. Use it as an air-to-water intercooler setup and run it out like that. I thought that was a very interesting approach. So I understand why Hemis are fast with twin turbos. I understand why light cars like a K-Series all-wheel drive Honda with 55, 60, 70 pounds of boost is fast. But the Coyote is different. The Coyote has introduced a lot of people to wait a minute. It's 2K series basically bolted together, you know, together, and we could treat it as 2K series together. If any Honda is going to get into Coyote, he'll look at the Coyote and go, I'm familiar with this because it's basically 2K series motors together. And then I start telling you what the power potential is of that motor. And a lot of people that don't know anything about that motor, like the guy that was popping off here, starts calling it cute. It's dumb and stuff. I'm sorry. At Streetcar uh, TX, wait a minute, what was it? Um, the Coyote won two classes at world cup warriors class street fighter there were three out of four cars at tx2k finals that were coyote powered all with ffre engines the other one was a 5.4 slash 5.8 variant uh that was running in the 670 660 range so i think the street alpha podcast i'm hoping opened the door to some people talking about the potential of the coyote and i'm hoping more people get into it but i'm hoping that those people kind of like watch my shit so that they don't make the same mistake twice and finally i had a customer last week after catching up from tx2k do the typical mistake of going to vmp and buying a gen 3r now understand this guys someone trying to sell a product is always gonna do anything possible to get money out of your fucking pocket they're not gonna be honest with you they want to sell a product so if you have a roush 2.3 liter let's say you have a roush phase 2 stage 3 phase 2 79 millimeter pulley or 80 millimeter pulley bap lu 47s and you want to get more power out of it what i will tell you is get a thousand cc injector get a lung tune and a fuel system Pulley down E85, let's party. Because you're already tapped out on pump gas at 650 rural horsepower. But some people, for whatever reason, want to watch people make 700 plus, 800 plus rear wheel horsepower on pump gas like fucking idiots. You and I both know 100% bullshit. It is octane. There's not enough octane on pump gas to support that. How do I know that? Did you guys watch my last video? Did you watch a bone stock mustang on a stock tune knock back three degrees so let's do some critical thinking here gentlemen if a bone stock car with a ford calibration knocks on florida pump gas naturally aspirated with no modifications you really think that same fuel can power a car to make 800 rear wheel horsepower like, really? Really? That, that, that's what you think? That, that, that's the leap you're making? It ain't even enough for NA in Florida, pump gas. But, but that totally changes when you tune it and then shove another 400 horsepower on top of it. Makes total fucking sense, huh, motherfuckers? Like, I could totally make the leap that a bone stock car that knocks on pump gas, that same fuel can totally support 800 horsepower. Or are they adding an octane booster, saying it's pump gas with an additive, and trying to sell you bullshit? 
So this gentleman, unfortunately, hit us up. Please help. My car made 30 less horsepower, and it feels slower than the Roush 2.3. Now, I could put on my cape and go, let me save a hoe. And then my mask in a cape, and let me be Captain Save a Hoe, and be like, okay, let me add timing, desensitize an ox sensor, and here's your power back. I can't make the rotors spin faster on a tune. You understand? If your peak horsepower, I'm sorry, if your peak boost level on pump gas is 10 PSI, there's nothing I can do to make it feel better than a little 2.3 that's whipping up really quickly, feeling torquey, and giving you that nice seat of the pants feel that a 10 PSI 2.3 liter Roush can do. You got sold a bill of goods by them, and now you're like, what do Alex fix, fix their fuck up? No, this is what you do. You take that blower back. Ah, yeah, yes. This feels slower and is slower than my current car. I want my money back. You promised me more power. You promised me more performance. This feels slower than my Roush 2.3 blower. It is not an upgrade to go from a 2.3 Roush to a Gen 3 R on pump gas. It is not an upgrade. That's why I bought my 13 Mustang. At the end of the day, I got sick and tired of everyone being fucking bamboozled. And what happens? We are made to hold the bag. That's right. Lund Racing, come, come save us, Mr. C Captain save a -ho. Da -da -da -da. You bought a Gen 3 R? Here's more timing. Get the fuck out of here, asshole. Get your money back. Do not upgrade your 2.3 liter supercharger if you are staying on pump gas. The only time you should ever upgrade your 2.3 liter is if you've tapped it out. If you've tapped it out. I got a 69 upper and a 15% in this bitch, and all it does is make heat. Now I want to step up to the Gen 3R 2650 rotor pack, and I would say, there you go. Now we're ready to party on E85. But if you are going to stay on pump gas forever, no VMP blower is going to help you achieve any more power because your limitation is octane. And if you have to put in a can of octane booster to make your Gen 3 R feel good, guess what the fuck you're doing? You're not on pump gas. You're on 100 octane. We'll talk about it. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. Thanks for letting me get about 20 to 15 to 20 minutes of bullshit in there. But we'll talk about where the Grey Goose can end up being over oversold the product and asking your tuner to bail you out on it. And did the Street Alpha podcast change your view on anything after hearing me talk for another two and a half hours? Let's just say there's a reason why a company had to use Octanium to make 800. Hey, let's have me the Coyote platform. I've been single. I've been binge watching a whole bunch of videos. Planning on getting either a six RD or ten RD at the end of the at the end of the year. What's a great setup to roll race on a daily? Holy shit, you do said roll race. Well, first of all, ah, oh, bro, roll race. Ah, uh, okay. I'm starting to notice that a lot of people get brave on import platforms because Mustangs don't roll race. I've already said this in previous uh, shows. If, if a Lund or name your top tier Mustang guy gave a fuck about roll racing, you don't think he could build a 210, 215, 220 mile an hour roll race Mustang? You don't, have you seen what those cars look like? Have you seen what a 200 plus mile an hour GTR looks like? Billet this, 70 pounds of boost, that, full race shit. You don't think a guy that runs, let's say, certain classes says, you know what, I want to FAFO and see if I can make a 200 mile an hour roll car. Cameron Fisher. I think his name is Cameron Fisher. Turbo 400, Gen 3 car, I think. Built, went 198, fucking around. I think he builds his own shit. Not to say that he's not talented. But if a gentleman like that can build something like that out of his own garage, or maybe with the help of Midnight, then he took over the wrenching duties on his own, and he was in there against R8s, GTRs, Vipers running 198. I was there. I watched certain cars get down. Certain cars didn't get down. The only cars that were in the 
upper tier shit or like shop cars, UGR, Calvo, Nth Moto, stuff like that. And um, uh, the the other GTR people uh, in Houston, I forget, Houston House of Power or something like that. Those guys have fully built crazy cars. So you don't think a Mustang guy with a Coyote, 50 pounds of boost, set it up for roll racing, anti-lag the whole nine yards, you don't think he can break into the 200 mile an hour zone? Stop it. So to answer your question, I don't know your power level. I don't know what you want to do. Roll racing to me is not something you should strive for if you're above five seconds, 60 to 130. You understand? To me, if you're a 570 and up or five, like my Corvette's a 570 car, it ain't that fast on a roll. It's okay. So 60 to 130, I do 570 on the Corvette. I would never say that's my roll race car, right? My roll race car has to be able to run a sub four second 60 to 130. Listen to me. This is Alejandro Flores talking. In my opinion, sub four seconds is when people start to raise their eyebrows. They go, oh, you went 380, 60 to 130 on the street with a rear wheel drive car? Yes. Oh, that's serious. Now, what would I do to build a roll car? I don't think it matters transmission. I think it matters power output. You could build a fast roll car with a Turbo 400. You could build a fast roll car with a Glide. You could build a fast roll car with a 6R80. You could build a fast road car with a 10R80. But if you're above 5 seconds, 60 to 130, ESS, 15 pounds of boost, E85 fuel system, cool. But at the end of the day, if you choose roll racing as your main uh, activity for motorsports and you're above... Five seconds, 60 to 130, it's a wash. At the end of the day, I go, I, I don't care. Like, unless you're sub four seconds, then I can under, then I can at least start to get into the psyche of a person that likes to roll race, right? But if you're a slow roll racer, I go, why are you roll racing? Just like, you're just a non-playable character in the life in, in, in the grand scheme of things, because if you are choosing to go to a meet to race cars that specifically roll race, boy, be careful. Because guys that specifically like to roll race are sub four, sub three second cars sometimes. So that's why that question to me is not a clear... Eh, nah, 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 nah. You have to decide where you're going to live, what your budget is, and if you're going to specifically roll race. Ah, fuck, I would... I would... I wouldn't even get into it unless you're sub four seconds. My GT500, I, I started thinking about it. I go, why don't I build a roll car? One, I have a dick and I'm straight. Two, I don't really want to only relegate my car to roll racing. I, there's not many places to do it here. The streets are bullshit. You can't get an even start. When was the last time you saw a dead even start on a roll race? Have you watched Texas 2K? Have you watched the shit show that is Texas 2K? The guy on the left does the pacing, some guy brake boost, some guy anti-lags. You can't anti-lag and be on the brake at the same time, so that becomes a bit of a weird thing, and they have to go three or four times before, it's so fucking stupid. Whereas drag racing, pre-stage, stage, go. That's why I don't think I would ever build a roll car, because it is incumbent on your dance partner to be on the same page to get a quote-unquote fair race off. Welcome to the newbies. Hit that like button. Last live, you mentioned the Grey Goose being on meth, meth, ethanol mix. Can you elaborate on that more and what kind of fuel system is capable of handling it? Patrick Gibbs, that's a great question. Not one fuck. <laughs> not one motherfucker. Not one motherfucking fuel system with electric pumps should be run with a 70% unless you're under fucking 15 PSI. So... The Lunds have a mechanical fuel pump driven by a belt. We simply mix 70% M1 with 30% ethanol 1R, making it a 70-30 meth ethanol mix. We were at 50-50. So we said we, could, we need to bump up the base fuel pressure and run 70%. So we have to literally measure it. We're in the pits measuring putting a premix together, putting it in the car. Some people run straight meth, M1, right up the bitch. And we don't have that because 
we only have ID 2600s and we don't think that the ID 2600s coupled with the, I don't want to say sporadic, but let's just say less than optimal secondary fueling system, aka a second set of ID 1300s are in the car. The Grey Goose has eight 2600s, yes, and eight 1300s. The 2600s are controlled by the computer, the car's computer. The 1300s are set to pulse with the AMS 2000 at over 50 pounds of boost. So that becomes, it makes the dance a little more difficult. Now, if you wanted to run a 50-50 ethanol mix to M1, so let's, let's say ethanol 1R, two and a half gallons. M1, two and a half gallons. That is your 50-50 mix. You have 50% meth with 50% ethanol 1R. You do the calculator stuff. You bring out what the stoic should be or your tuner can do it for you. You use an additive to mitigate any of the corrosive features that methanol M1 can, can do. So there's like a little uh, can of like M2, I think it's called, and you put it in the mix and slosh it around so that it mitigates any potential corrosive features of what M1 can cause. I think you could do that with under 15 PSI or maybe even under 20 PSI if you have three 295 pumps and ID 2600s. If you have three 296 pumps, which is like stupid, and ID 2600s and a base fuel pressure of over 55 or 60, I think you might be able to make a lot more power but I would not do that on a stock car. I would not do that because you're taxing the shit out of your fuel system. This is race car stuff only, in my opinion. Now, I know you're going to hear this and go, oh, maybe I can do that. On, on, on like under 50 pounds of boost, stick with ethanol 1R. Stick with ethanol 1R. The reason we went with more M1 is because we have EGT sensors in every single primary tube. Exhaust, gas, temperature sensors. So we started seeing the EGTs start to creep up with the 50-50 mix. It started to go la 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 la. And the moment you start getting above, I want to say, or close to 1,500 EGTs, stuff starts to melt. So what we ended up doing is saying we need to mitigate that. How do we mitigate EGTs? Well, M1 or more M1 and see what the difference is. Sure enough, EGTs were in the high 1300s after a 70-30 mix. So I'm sorry for the long-winded answer, but these answers aren't just like, yeah, yeah, just put uh, 10 gallons of this and I send you a tune, Holmes. No, you need to know the why, if, and when, and what it requires if you're gonna ever run that kind of a mix. Any updates on any of your cars? Alex, today I drove the Fox Body to a private Fox Body show video uploads tomorrow took video talked to people had a wonderful time i was blown away how everyone was an adult everyone was a successful guy everyone was just there hanging out having a good time and i thought to myself this could be a good thing for the channel and for me just for rubbing elbows with the right people that have the right connections and have a similar love for fox bodies than i do so today i drove the fox 40 miles, which was crazy. Um, got everything, you know, got the got the car in the show, started hanging out with people, and I was like, bro, this is good. Now, I don't have an update on the other vehicles, but I know that Ben Calamer uh, has to get a new torque tube for the Corvette and a new input shaft um, because the torque tube is fucking wiped out. So new torque tube, new input shaft, trans is built. So once he gets those two parts in, which will be like $2,000, I said, here's money. Here's fucking money. Just get it done. I will get my Corvette back. I'll get you Corvette content. I talked to um, the fabricator for the Fairmont. I have to send him the radiator and the intercooler. And then we're just going to have a 10-point front and front tubular rear back half uh, Fairmont. So hopefully that ends up well. GT500, I have to package the motor and send it off to l &M. Heads are staying. Heads are staying. This is the plan with the GT500. Bottom end, take it to l and l and Go over everything, make sure bearings are good, make sure the thing's kosher and happy, send it back with a, you know, uh, uh, you know, a bill of approval, this thing's fine. Then Senior and I are going to put together the motor because Senior put together his motor, his GT500, so we're going to put 
our motor tip, my motor together at Lund Racing, and I'll probably video that process. We're going to put the cams in straight up. We're not going to key cut, nothing like that. Then once that complete motor is built, now it's time for me to get going and get the motor in the GT500. So that's pretty much all the updates. I got the 13 GT, if you saw yesterday's video, gained three tenths, but I'm just a tune because I'm trying to build that car as if you're building that car. So the next step is to get that car to the drag strip. It is not to put a cold air. It's not to put a converter. No, I want to get as most as I can out of a tune and pump gas. Get that all figured out. Bring it back. Then maybe do some headers. Process all over again. Then maybe do LU47s and E85. Process. So it will be a build series. Okay, this is a at least a year-long process. So I'm sorry if you thought a Roush blower was going to go in there tomorrow. <clears throat> no, I'm going to build it as if you were building it. And I'm going to try to make the playlist work out so that you can follow along with that progression. Most Fox body guys are us Gen Xers. Absolutely. I'm familiar with methane gear driven fuel pumps. Now I remember you mentioned it along with the oil pump attached to it. Good mature Fox body guys are a badass. Homie Caesar says, yay, caught alive. There's no good money in racing, roll or drag. Do it because you enjoy it. Now, I had a conversation with at least three guys that come from the same thought process i'm there i'm there i don't think racing is worth it at all i don't i don't run a racing business when you watch i'll give you an example if it was for content i never watch any cletus stuff to watch him race i don't watch any of the cletus stuff, period but especially to watch him race because i get frustrated i go this motherfucker needs a team that is tight so I don't know what's happened with the El Camino. I don't know what's happened with the other cars. But for whatever reason, it seems like the racing has a good focus, but not enough like the other guys, Nitrous Car and Dr. Tunamal. At least they seem to have a very tight program. Whereas Cletus' stuff, I don't think that's his main bread and butter. I don't want to make my life centered around racing. So many YouTube channels think that they're going to be popping because their car is a nine-second car, eight-second car. I'm sorry, you're... To build an eight-second car right now, you're you're an, a firm account away. Why should I watch you do something I can do with a credit card and an affirm account? That's nothing cool. People watch Cletus because of the character. They like him as a person. They like some of the wild stuff he does. So all that in conjunction with the racing helps out. I don't give a fuck about racing. And mo some of my least viewed videos are my racing videos because they're not that impressive and I'm not that fast. And I totally understand that. So then I thought to myself, self, who are you racing for? The fans or yourself? Myself. So I don't need to video it and go crazy. A lot of the guys that I met today are guys that just love fast cars and they race for themselves at a rental and they have personal goals they want to achieve. I would just be videoing that. Not necessarily building a car, building a car for Texas 2K. Are you fucking psycho? Build a car for Texas 2K? Build a car for FL2K? Are you fucking psycho? No way. There is no money in that. If I want to swing my dick a little bit and I got a little money, I get building a car for a certain class. I personally don't need that. So luckily, I, w I, I was basically, there was a lot of like confirmation happening today when these guys were talking to me about their racing past. And then they're like, bro, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I met the guy who, the first guy who ever was to average a seven-second true street run or average. Guy's name is Kiko Leiva or Javier Leiva or Leiva, Leiva, Leiva. He was the first guy to ever average a seven-second quarter mile, three back-to-back -back runs with his Fox body, like a strawberry Fox body. He sold the car and he's like, what the fuck am I doing all this stuff? And after he sold, listen, his whole life was just putting money into that car to run a number. You know what he's owned since he stopped racing? A 4 GT, a Viper, a 1700 horsepower Supra. He has owned some of the most badass builds and nobody would know who the fuck he is. Nobody even would like, who the fuck is that guy? Why? He's like silent, does his own thing. So he was known for a seven second Fox body and he was public but now once he started doing it for himself, he has had better caliber of vehicles and enjoys life more. Today at the show, he had a 10R80 swapped, Gen 3 Coyote swapped, Lujan Motorsports built, 85 hatch with original paint, and it was fucking gorgeous. Tomorrow, 5 p.m., you'll see the video. 
it is ridiculous the caliber of cars that were at this little private spot that nobody even knows about. Um, this little development that is super nice and everyone seems to be hot rod centric. Alex, are you able to share the smoking gun on the GT500? Yes, at least one of them. Springs were fucked up. Wait a minute. You're telling me a car that had a valve train failure and someone put the same springs back in there after they tested them? All of a sudden, the springs gave up the ghost? Yes. So I sent my motor out to get rebuilt and all I got for $12,000 plus was new pistons and chains. At the end of the day, I don't give a fuck how long it took you to take it apart. I don't give a fuck how labor intensive this thing is. The end result for my $12,000, and I don't have that kind of money, but I, I had to cough it up, was a set of fucking pistons. Same rods were used. Same cranks was used. Same heads were used. Same springs were used. Same, same cams were used. What the fuck did I get for 12000 bucks? Weak springs. So when the heads were looked over, three, three cylinders had weak springs. So when the car would go into boost, they would just float, stay open, and the engine would shut the fuck down. Now, they have been refurbished. Everything looks kosher. New springs installed. New guides. New a complete valve job. So at least I know that when I get these heads back and bolt them onto a rebuilt bottom end from L&M, that everything has been looked at and replaced new cams new springs new valve job everything uncut fucking gears but no apparently i'm an asshole for being mad that i paid twelve thousand fucking something dollars for state same cam same springs and just pistons mind blown i will be asking hey listen up i will be asking for money back up to you or not if you don't want to pay it but that's up to me or not as to what i want to let out there if i don't get money and i'm going to ask for the exact amount that i get charged not more or less for pain and suffering and labor whatever the machine shop says i owe i'm going to ask you to pay because for twelve thousand bucks all i got was fucking pistons and a motor that lasted three months and it made no power so sorry i got ripped off i got ripped off hey alex good idea to get some new springs in there cool how much are they go get them hey alex good idea to get new cams in there these keys look a little jacked up cool let's get them nope looks good looks good looks good looks good puts it all back together sends it back to me i go what a couple of times don't make no power well i mean you have old cams in there um i sent it to you don't get me started i'm gonna ask for money first Tuition should be the new name for Section 8. Tuition might be the new name. No piston damage? Is that just luck? A damn, not even under the desk handy for the remaining costs. Alex got ripped off for real. How much for the EAS labor? 95%? Seems like you paid them to mess your motor up, apparently. Okay. I'm one of these psychopaths that if the failure was valve train related, I want everything new in the valve train. Right? The problem is when you get somebody that builds motors and they get your motor and they're like oh it's time to upgrade stuff okay what do you think we should do well we should definitely upgrade the pistons okay more compression less boost cool same cam same head same 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 springs same whoa whoa, whoa what excuse me you, you want to use the same cams you want to use the same springs and i supposedly got a valve job i'm sorry i'm sorry I don't see it. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck how many pictures you got. I don't see it. So I'm going to ask for money back. And it's going to be at least 3000 bucks. I hope you got 3000 bucks in the PayPal account somewhere because I want that shit back because I got nothing for that shit. I got nothing for the fucking $12,000 that I gave up. I got fucking nothing out of that motor, bro. Fuck all that. Get me all riled up. What do you think? What do you think about HPJ? Who gives a fuck about them? God damn it! Why do I give a fuck about them? Jesus Christ! Ask them. Hit them up on their YouTube. Talking about GT five hundred and D. I told you that car's a fucking dud. I told you that car's a fucking dud. Jesus Christ! Who gives a fuck about them? Holy shit! Unreal. 
I'd still charge them for labor for replacing the motor again. Time is money. People like that will not see it from my point of view. Well, I don't know what happened. It wasn't me. I took all these photos and I'm a good builder. Look at what my car runs. Well, somehow my motherfucker didn't run. And all I did was put the motor in. It ain't tuning. Bitch was running on the same tune for fucking that damn near six years. So, take responsibility for your actions. See that you did not replace parts that failed or could have failed. Why didn't you just charge me an extra four or five hundred bucks for springs? Why didn't you just say, let's get new cams in there from LNM? See, my problem is this. <clears throat> and you guys are going to face this one of these days. In Cletus, most recent video was dank. You got to admit, I didn't watch it. You're going to start dealing with people that have a bias against the company and they're going to guide your build against what their personal thought process is. When it comes to modular stuff, the first 5.4, five, 5.8, five, I think LNM. Why? I only tune... 2,000 cars a year plus, not in person, all remotely. And every LNM long block just works. Makes 11, 1,200, bomb, guy's gone. And I don't have to fuck with it. See you later. So if someone does not like LNM and refuses to use their parts because it's LNM, and you, the customer, trust this person, but this person has a bias against LNM, then you're the one that's losing out on some of the better builders and part providers in the modular game no use this guy use that guy use this guy well, I, actually i tune for lund racing and i see lnm motors just work every fucking day just boom 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 cookie cutter so because you don't like them doesn't mean you can't i can't run their parts so you're gonna run into that someday guys where your builder is gonna be against something that is established and known and you're gonna have to make the decision do I not use this builder ever again because they don't like parts that are known, vetted, and verified? Come on, stop it. And I know too much. I know the history. Homeboy's going to... The only reason I haven't gone all in, all in, is because I want some money back. You will be giving me money back. Nothing personal. You just did a really bad job on my motor. Like a really bad job. You half-assed the motor and you put pistons in for 12000 bucks. At the end of the day, I don't give a fuck how much cleaning you had to do. I don't give a fuck how many cans of brake cleaner you had to fucking use and charge me for. I got pistons for $12,000. Um, take them to people's court. I'm not going to take them to no fucking court. Th this is court. This is court because if I don't get what I want, this is court. Never even got to race and I'm sure they'll say, that's racing. Alex, shine a flashlight into the hole and tell me what you see. It's my middle finger. Hey, shine a flashlight and shut the fuck up, flashlight. Flashlight ain't going to solve this. I, huh, Bro, don't get me started. You're getting me riled up, bro. Super true. Some of these builders take no responsibility after bending over a customer and saying, well, I don't know what happened. What's a conservative safe power level for an 09 GT500 96 fucking 50? How can I teach these kids? Six fifty on everything pump gas. Well, I saw this guy make it. That company made seven. This guy told me you're asking me. Six fifty. I don't like what he said. I'm gonna go to Facebook. Alex says six fifty. Where do you guys think that guy's bald? He lives in a one one ball cancer. Clown shit. If he doesn't pay, then what's the play from there? Uh, he, he knows. He knows. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. There's history. I don't want to go there. I don't want to have to go there. Because right now, I'm not recommending homie. But I'm not talking against homie publicly. I haven't even mentioned the name. Have you seen me mention the name? Everyone knows, Alex. Well, that's on you. But I haven't gone out of my mouth and say, don't go to this guy. But if I send an email saying, hey, this is my bill. I want this PayPal tonight. Like, get on your PayPal and send me this amount tonight. If he said, nah, that ain't my shit. I, I'm willing to help you out, brother. 
Uh, no, money helps me out. Yeah, SVT, come on, SVT, you know this fucking answer. I've said 650 since the beginning of time, and people say, well, why don't you give me a higher number? Because I don't want to give you the expectation that a 700 horsepower pump gas car is normal. That's abnormal. Peasant chat is getting to Alex. The pen chat never disappoints. We need to data log Alex's blood pressure. These retarded repeated questions are going to take him out. Peasant chat is living up to its name tonight. Alex is on fire. Alex going on rant is my favorite. Anybody asking how to make power on pump gas should watch your most recent video from Florida Gas. Mofler, that's why I did it. And I don't think the people get it, man. I can teach this kid. Pendejo, on pump gas, this car is knocking. N.A. stock. And you're going to be like, Yeah, hey, how much you think? You think I can make 800 on my GT100? <laughs> the only way you're going to make 800 horsepower on pump gas is if you have a fucking 600 cubic inch motor. That's it. Um, if he's been watching, he would know 650 max. Other than that, you need different fuel. Sounds like the GT500's new name is Hush Money Jr. I don't mind paying premium prices, but at least let me get what I'm paying for. I never complained about price. I got, uh, uh, I got three options and I opted for the most expensive one thinking that was going to cover my ass. No, I paid the most money to get most of his dick up my ass. I went, whoa. Oh, I paid you more money to get fucked balls deep? Oh, shit, son. I should have just opted for the $8,500 option to get fucked. But that's okay. Because, you know, nothing's better than paying $12,000 to get fucked. Oh. <sighs> Oh, bro, I'm telling you, I am blown away at this industry. I am blown away at the irresponsible motherfuckers that work in this shit-ass industry. And I'm here to be the regulator. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I got to be that motherfucker. So if you want to know who to go to, who not to go to, bro, pay me on the fucking Patreon and I'll tell you what's up. Don't go to this guy. Go to this guy. This guy sucks. This guy's good. This guy's an asshole. Because no one's willing to say that. Everyone wants to hide behind the fact that, well, he can get me a motor and this guy can get me a set of cylinder heads and this guy got me wheels one time, so I'm not going to talk shit on him. Right. Someone could. <laughs> I meant pump gas that comes in a can. <laughs> I paid extra. I paid extra money to get shafted. Oh, hey, Alex, uh, where are you going to fuck your ass? Oh, oh Okay. Well, you got the $7,500 option to fuck your ass. All right. You got the $8,500 uh, option to fuck your ass. Cool. What's the last option? <laughs> we will absolutely bottom out on your booty for twelve five. <laughs> Motherfucker, count me in. What the fuck? What the fuck did I do? Oh, my God. What's the limit before the rods fly on the Gen 1 Coyote with a single turbo E85? <laughs> well, now that you say single turbo E85, that changes the whole equation. About 700 and <laughs> some horsepower. <laughs> Bro, it's an air load limit. Okay? It's an air load. Uh, Edward Martinez has an absolute fucking um, unicorn of a car. Okay, I don't know what just happened. The room just lit up. I don't know what the fuck just happened. Oh, whoa, Jesus. Um, he has a unicorn of a car. That car went eight. <laughs> it's a Gen 1 motor. I don't know how, but it did. But what I tell people is that about 750 or so wheel, I wouldn't really trust the rods to stay in that shit. JD Bruce says, thank God I'm a member of Patreon. You want me to tell you what motor builder to go to? Pfft, I'm not going to say here because, no, no, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what happened with my situation and I'll tell you what to avoid, what not to avoid. So that's the best way I can guide people. It is, is a one-on-one is -on -one situation where you want to know what the deal is. I'm going to tell you, look, some guy at Texas 2K bought an off the shelf built Gen 3 from FFRE through Real Street. He said, Real Street, I want a Gen 3 FFRE, you know, stage three build. Okay, boom. Went sixes, bro. Went sixes. Like, if that doesn't tell you that they are the guys to use for coyote stuff, nothing else does. 
If Pork Stars had to pay twelve thousand as a homie hookup price, might have been the red flag. But I gave you a, I gave you a disc. Look, I was sticking my dick up your ass. I just didn't go to the last vein. That's my hookup because that's where the pain happens. Oh, thanks for that. I appreciate that discount on the shaft. Appreciate that. The reason I talk like this is this. Nobody else does. You know where you know where people talk like this? People talk like this amongst their friends, amongst car groups. Yeah, I got fucked by this guy. You did? Yeah, bro. He just grabbed me by my ears and <laughs> yanked it back and just bottomed out of my butt. <laughs> so what'd you do about it? Oh, nothing. I just let it happen. And I paid another guy to fix it. What? So the ugly truth is, when someone screws you over, you don't stay quiet because now you're part of the problem. So I'm not going to stay quiet until it's made right. Now, the reason it's taken so long to be made right is because I want to have my machine shop and motor builder that's taking care of everything over there to take his time. Check every spring. Check every valve. Check every, check the guides. Check, the, check everything. Papa, do it all. He did. He goes... I got notes, bro. I got a book of notes here. I got pressures. I got this. And I think three cylinders were not firing. We're not seeing adequate boost because the springs were weak on the intake side. Good. You got to make it public when someone fucks you. I'm saying you got to go through. I'm going to have a third party look at this. Because I would have been such a dumbass. To have him fix it again, and if I had another issue, uh, bro, it would be World War fucking three, because I'd be so mad. I said, nah, 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 take a step back. Let a third party mediate this. Shh, 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 shh. Okay, bro, this is fucked up. Oh, exactly what I thought. A valve train problem. <laughs> give me money. Oh, you're not going to give me money? Cool. I will publicly say, never use this person again because of what happened to me. Ain't no way. Grab the ears. It's hilarious. Uh... Oh my God, stop it. He effed you better than... <laughs> stop. Bro, stop. I can't even say those words. You, I could highlight them, but man, how's everything this evening? Oh, contractor, it's a good time. Alex, you paid $12,000 for what he didn't do, not for what he did, or something. I love the lack of responsibility that people just like, oh, I, I did uh, nothing I did. It's definitely nothing I did. Oh, Okay. A yoga class is a great way to relax, and hot yoga has incredible scenery. Sorry you couldn't find a hot chick emoji. You know what I am saying. Paid per keyway grind, grinder as a motorcycle mechanic. Sometimes shit happens, shit breaks, and it's no one's fault. But you got to man up and fix it. This is why I'm the only guy left in town to take care of your customers. I know you're in pain. Same thing having my car worked on. Now I have to unfuck what he did. The guys at the car show today that watch my videos, they're like, I understand why you wrench on your own shit. I go, right, there aren't people worth a fuck that are willing to back up their stuff old school. Now, I understand shops. They charge you for, okay, people sometimes get mad when they get quoted something by a shop. Oh, it's too expensive to install headers. Yeah, pendejo. But if something goes wrong with the install, they got you for free, right? I mean, I would hope that's what shops do. I would hope that there is some cost baked into the price that says, if I have to fix something that was my fuck up, then he doesn't get charged anything, right? But what I'm experiencing is shops and builders don't even do the initial thing that they were contracted to do. The initial thing you were contracted to do, you didn't do right. So then when I said, bro, this is fucked up, and then you immediately started with excuses. No, no, no. It's very specific. Nap in the hole. This is mechanical because I know air pumps. Oh, you don't know shit. Okay, cool. Took motor out, put heads out. Boom, valve train issue. Springs. Stock ass springs that I've seen. Not stock ass springs, but aftermarket springs that I've seen 7,500 RPMs for five years. Yeah, let's reuse those. I'm not a weatherman, but expect 12,000 inches. Alex, thoughts on two support for the 24 50s? No idea. Don't care. The dude who blew his wife got rear-ended second time, apparently? <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? 
<laughs> oh, what are the chances that the builder says it was not his work? It was the tune that failed. Zero. You know what? Okay, guys, this is what's happening. Do you want to hear what's happening with motor builders right now? They contract a machine shop to do all the work. Hey, buddy, what's up? What's up? Here, I got these cylinder heads that I got from a customer. Do a valve job. Do a valve job on them. Uh, and here's his cams. You know, here's some springs. Try them out. Okay, okay. Hit me up. Let me know how much it was. Then the machine shop goes, yeah, you owe me $1,200. Cool. Alex, that was $2,400. Okay. So the machine shop does all the work, checks everything. Homeboy doesn't verify anything. Slaps the motor together. Maybe checks a couple of clearances here and there. Oil pan, bearing clearances, gasket, quench, takes pictures, sends it out. Uh, hey, this thing's fucked up. Hey, what? Well, definitely not me. Right, because your machine shop built it all. That's how it works, guys. If you don't have your own shit, if you don't have your own machines, if you don't have a complete mother fucking machine shop that you own you can't say you built that motor you had a machine shop build that motor and you just put your fucking name on it that's what's happening nowadays motor builders fuck out of here you go to ffre they got everything in house everything in house alex you just suck in ffre's dick i went there i fucking saw everything they have Joe talked to me and said, this is what we got when we were dropping off Lund Racing shit. I go, that's who I recommend. Hey, Alex, thanks for the info, says Kurt Selecker. I'm in the market for a second 5.0, uh, second generation uh, Coyote. Do you recommend a 6R80 or an MT82? I'm not familiar with the platform. Thanks again. <laughs> what do you want to do? Kurt Selecker, what do you want to do? He's going to be pissed when he finds out them new pistons were newly used. Shop once lost my business because they broke my hood prop and tried to hide the evidence. Never told me. The people who play hot potato with the issues versus taking responsibility are the worst. Well, this is the problem, though, Alfredo Diaz. It'd be one thing if I had never heard of issues happening with said machine, said builder. Never heard an issue. I mean, never had, never heard an issue. I would have taken the motor out happily with a big smile on my face. I go, shit happens, buddy. Put it on the pallet. Send it to him. Let me know what you find out. And we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Hey, man, the cams are fucked up. Okay, let's get a new cam. Da, da, da. I would have been happy. But there's history of fuckery and excuses. I was not going to be another motherfucker that fell victim to that. Uh-uh. Then why'd you take it to him the first time, Alex? It's a good question. I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's a very good question. Just like Mustang Lifestyle called himself a tuner, but he barely does anything. Look, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy forever. That guy's a fucking nobody. Nobody. Let's just not even mention that fucking name. Guy's a nobody. Go Illuminator for build, motor, top end. I don't know, though. Um, both are good options. Man trans, if you're going to be aggressive, no. Ask him what he wants to do first. Don't tell him the pros and cons of a manual and an auto. We are not five years old here. Dude has someone else to assemble it so he could say it wasn't me. How the fuck do you break a hood prop? <laughs> oh, stop. You see that one guy with a certain short block that keeps blowing through heads but refuses to blame the deck of the block? He's lunching, so I don't know what you guys are talking. <clears throat> Ain't nothing to do with me. Um, how do you still have a hood prop? <laughs> Hey, fuck you. I still have a hood prop. I don't have struts on my shit. Just Coyote swapped the GT500 at this point. Glass roof Coyote? I thought about it. I thought about getting the motor built and sold and shove a FFRE Stage 3 in it. I thought about it. But I don't know. It's it's not a Shelby at that point. You know? Matt Oliver says, Nothing like driving home from a side hustle. Late season snowstorm. Bluetooth fired up with the live stream. Why you went with them? Says Dino Kill. Ball bearing on the oil pan. Um, I just finished a P1X car. Yeah. Yeah, Parker. <laughs> Let's talk about the five watt poles you get. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the five watt poles? Because I was the one tuning that car. <laughs> or I could just leave that shit alone. I think I want to just leave that shit alone. 
keep it in a long term boost. Uh <laughs> oh, fuck. Been there, done that. Header job turned into me having to pull the oil pan and do the install myself. Craig Galzetti says, Alex, I pick up a Gen 2, a Gen 3 2018 Friday. Manual bone stock, no opti talking cloth seats here. What? Manual, and yes, I'm going to drag race it. Oh. Going for some world beadlocks and Hoosiers. Why? <laughs> uh, so, Craig, did you think I was going to be really excited when you typed that up? <laughs> Wait till Alex sees it. Or did you just tell me out your, did you just lay out your plans? Because nothing in there tells me about power, goals. You don't need beadlocks for anything if you're going to run it NA. Alex, you got beadlocks. I mean, they, they look cool. And I'm gay. <laughs> I got beadlocks in the Fairmont because I switched tires like I switched shoes. But like nothing in there was like, I have these goals. <laughs> like nothing. Um, it would be better than a Shelby with a coyote in it. Uh, how about a predator swap then? Yeah, exactly, Parker. I'm going to stick quiet on that. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fuck, you're self-snitching. Stop, self-snitching. Who cares if it's not a Shelby? How many S197s have GT500 front end and conversions? This is an actual Shelby. And glass roof coyote, if I want to sell the car, it has to have a four valve in it. A 5.8 Trinity, it has to have one. Shelby guys are gay, and they like the motor that came with it in the car. I personally would have a coyote in it. Bead locks for clout. Uh, big things are coming, guys. <laughs> uh, hey, Alex, Ford Performers dropped a Gen 4 Illuminator, but did, I don't think they have a control pack for it, so why would they offer it with a dual intake? That's a great question, Travis. So Ford Racing dropping an Illuminator is interesting. Someone's out there racing. I think an Illuminator is the best option, I'd say under 1,200 horsepower for any Coyote guy, any Coyote guy. If you're going to build a Mustang, but you're going to stay under 1,200 horsepower, get a fucking Illuminator, bro. Don't even bother with the other shit. I was talking to Eric Vega. He's like, orale, <laughs> huh? Now, he was he's actually very well spoken. He goes, hello, Alex. How are you? Uh, my name is Eric Vega. I oh, wow. This guy, you know, anyway. So he's like, yeah, I sent my motor out and like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So I said, um, what are you going to get done? He goes, I'm going to get the short block. I'm rods and pistons on the short block, Holmes. I was like, rods and pistons on a short block, huh? Why don't you get a Gen 3 Illuminator short block? Gen 3. Actually, I'll do it online. So he said, oh, orderly, home, what you mean? And Gen 3 Illuminator short. There we go. So I go, how much is he charging you? He goes like, I don't know, like five grand. I go, uh, that, that's the price of a Illuminator. He goes, wait, what? <laughs> I go, that's the price of an Illuminator. Let me see, uh, NA, NA. Let me see, hold on. The 12 to one variant. Yeah, right here, guys. So imagine you're going to build your motor, right? And you send your short block off to somebody. And he's like, bro. After you give me 7,000 bucks, you're going to have a rods and pistons coyote. And then you go online and this fucking thing is right there staring at your face. Ford Performance, short block, illuminator, Gen 3, NA, 12 to 1 compression, $5,649. Bolt your Gen 2 heads on that bitch. And this bitch with boost and fuel can make up to 1,200. No problem. So, before you take it to a machine shop, before you do rods and pistons on your Gen 1, duh, 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 fucking go online, type in Gen 3 Illuminator, 12 to 1, sh -sh -sh -sh, put your heads on it, y vaya con Dios. It's like that simple, bro. Building Daily says, it was nice to meet you at Texas 2K. Sorry I interrupted your lunch. I don't know. Did you? Um, I honestly don't understand why some people hate on you. You're one of the most down-to-earth guys I've ever met, especially in the car scene. So, have some interrupted lunch on me. Brother, thank you so much. See, I get hate from people that don't even care to listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. A lot of people typically, a lot of people typically just hear you rant online 
and think, oh, he's just a shit talking homo, which is fine. Whatever. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. But where am I coming from? I'm coming from a place of experience and I have a ticket system full of examples that give me the knowledge base to drop it on you guys. But again, I have to have a personality. You're not going to watch me just pop off on facts and go, oh, wow. No, you got to have a personality and something to attach yourself to or differentiate from the crowd. So that's where my personality comes in and I make jokes about it. And when some people see that as a threat based, let's say we're both saying the same thing, but I'm saying it in a more entertaining way. Well, this guy's going to be threatened because why are you watching this guy? I'm saying the same things because I'm more entertaining, pendejo. Thanks for the money. Your articulate Mexican impression just reminds me of Brian Luna. Brian Luna, he told me something the other day. I go, Brian, why don't you get mad? He goes, Orale, hold! <laughs> you know, there's a there's a large amount of heart issues in my family, and I really don't want to uh, you know, have kids. I got kids and a wife. And I don't really want to go off the off the deep end because I start twitching and things start happening. And I'm like, yeah, I get it, bro. Because he has to be calm. He has like heart issues in his family. So he doesn't want to be like, oh. The guy is owed six figures, in my opinion, by people that I paid $12,000 to get fucked. Brian Luna paid about 60000 bucks to get his bussy bottomed out on, and it smells like bad dussy all over the fucking place. So... You think I got fucked. Nobody is more fucked. And he is quiet about it. He's like, yeah, you know, uh, it's really a bummer that everything. <laughs> I mean, I mean, get all my fucking my blicks. And I'm like, I am going to people's houses and I'm going to I'm going to demand checks. <clears throat> He's a better person than I am by far. You can also pay 12,000 ticket shafted too. The haters immediately resort to saying you live in a one bedroom apartment instead of investigating a little more. Brian Luna, Mexican Al Bundy, the lights in your room makes me wonder if you're having a warp core breach. <laughs> should I change it? What should I change it to? Let me see. Do you just want blue back there? Yeah, how about how about just leaving it blue? Or, or should I have like super gay colors back there? Let's go quick. Yeah. Oh well, no, no. Is there a pattern? Let me see. Oh, this way? Yeah. Uh, it, there we go. A <laughs> warp core breach, he says. Can I change modes? Oh, like Knight Rider? There you go, like Knight Rider. Uh, 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 that, that one looks like a warp core breach. Oh, I see little Tony's trying to get in here. Um, how the tube taker said you talk shit while parodying what you said about on three. Smells like Sasso. Brian Luna needs to make an anonymous video on his eight. Oh, 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 oh callate. Shh. Callate la boca. Bad dussy. Not Brian's bad dussy. Clip that. Clip that. Brian has the mind. And emotional control of a monk. He doesn't live in a one-bedroom apartment. Red alert, shield up. Exactly. Thanks, Alfredo. Hatch450 says, Alex, the hate is crazy when you constantly try to save people money and time. Maybe I'm crazy, but I, I don't like waste, waste my time and money on mental stress. The truth is always the villain. So, see, nobody is willing. They, they sneak this, right? I, dude, I heard that new fucking Future Metro song with Kendrick Lamar going and he just like went in on motherfuckers. And I'm like, I like that. I like that because he calls them out. So the people that sneak this do it through surrogates. And, and usually the people that sneak this are people that sell parts. Let's be honest. Why would you sneak this my shit if you're a tuner? You're not going to sneak this my shit if you're a tuner. You're like, we tune. Who cares? Right? I've never said anything negative about any tuner by name. So part companies, for sure, will try to, you know, sneak this through surrogates so that I look bad or at least they they vent their frustrations. But it's because I'm trying to save you guys fucking money. I'm sorry if you buy a 24 Mustang and you put a Gen 6 Whipple on it with fucking 12 pounds of boost with catalytic converters. What's that smell? Sasso, man. Sasso. Used to be Ron. 
Now I really want to know what happened to Brian's car. I have feelings. Oh, nobody knows. Brr. Woo! I got slow. Stop it. Jared, callate. The door on the left is Alex's front door, and the door on the right is his small closet sleeping bag on the ground. That's crazy. It's going to be a war. Got a local Boss 302 for 40K, 10,000 miles too expensive? No, that's pretty good for 10,000 miles. The loudest Orale Holmes in history, Brian Luna's Bad Dusty, smells like clapped Mickey Thompson's, says J.D. Bruce. Kendrick is to go, big three, nah, it's just big me. Jake Wallace, said, yes, I sell them for those, blah, blah, blah. J. Cole versus Kendrick Lamar, but Bama doesn't count. Is the S197 Mustang the best chassis? For drag racing, I think it's um, the better one to build only because if you want to see, you want to be in the nine second zone, you don't got to buy axles. You don't have to buy on an S550 right off the rip. You have to buy axles, a IRS brace kit, vertical links, the tow arm thing, all that shit. And that's 1500 maybe in a stop the hop kit. So let's say 3000 bucks. You have to pay 3000 bucks to make the IRS be able to withstand consistent nine second hits. No, you don't, Alex. Okay, cool. And S197, the stock 88 will do it all day until low nines. Then you got to start, you're going to go through axles, diffs, and all that stuff. Alex, you mean I can't wake? I can't wake? Alex, <laughs> you mean I can't wait 1,000 horsepower and 87 octane? My salesman told me different. No way he would lie, right? Jacob Wallace, okay, okay. No, nah, huevos podridos. Alex, favorite superhero, go. Well, I will look. I'm a Superman guy because he's Superman, right? He's Superman. <laughs> but Dr. Manhattan is a close second. He started hating humans. <laughs> <laughs> and he had the ability to be like i'm out of here fuck all this superman has his weird affinity for people and he gives a fuck except his dad apparently he was okay letting his dad die in a fucking tornado just like oh, i'm gonna save i'm gonna save some redhead bimbo but not my father that's about to get destroyed and dismembered by this tornado cool story uh i think his moral compass is a little fucked up so dr manhattan because i can I can more identify with Dr. Manhattan than, than Superman. Alice, what is any Terry Mandy carbon, 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 badass brakes, top fuel cars on pro stock cars running 660s in the quarter, but people run tiny brake manufacturer brakes and running comparable to. <laughs> Bro, this has gotten people a little a bit on a tiff because I started saying. Why the fuck would you run tiny brakes on a 3,500-pound streetcar? Well, I want all the advantages I could get. And then when you need to rely on the... And the thing is, you drive it on the street, pendejo. You drive it on the street. Orale. Bro. Will Woods. Big six-pot shits that are light. Not tiny brake manufacturer brakes. That's just free shit. That's just free shit. Hey, yo, your car's fast. Thanks. Took me a long time to build it. Want to put the sticker on it? Sure. Hey, here's a catch can. Awesome. Blah, blah, blah. Equipped vehicle wins. Blah, blah, blah. I get it. You think I'm stupid? Don't answer that. You think I'm... St <laughs> you think I'm stupid? You think I don't know how... You think I don't know... <laughs> Fucking the ghetto comes out of me when I start talking like that. John Jr. noticed it. I got mad at Lund one day, one time. I was a senior. He wasn't giving me directions to the hotel, and I don't know this NS Texas shit. And I just flipped off, and I pulled the truck over. And there, Junior's like, "Wow, the Boston comes out." I'm like, first of all, I'm not from Boston." But he goes, "Wow, the Northeast comes out of you real quick." I'm like, "Yeah." Anyway, let's say I make um, pens. <laughs> <laughs> and I go to a track and I see a car running really fast and there's no stickers on this car this guy's a privateer I go you know what you want a pen motherfucker what's this pen for well it's not just a pen it also comes with a thousand dollar check to put my pen manufacturer on the side of your fucking shit oh you're gonna give me a thousand bucks to put your stupid sticker on my card 
Yeah, absolutely. Because now it's Alex Penn equipped. Runs a seven. Alex Penn equipped Mustang run. Did it? Shut up. I, I, I'm so sick <laughs> of this fucking industry, bro. Don't ask. I will tell you, John Chap. I have a 13 boss. Unless you're going to go crazy, I would go 15 to 17 and slap a blower on it. Boss is a manual, live rear axle, gun tree drive a 6 already and blower, live happy. Been saying a lot of twin turbo S650s on the gram, and I feel like I'm going to go crazy looking at the comments. Money for nothing, chicks for free. Strange and lamb make Billy badass carbon brake setups that don't suck. Oh, the catch can making the car go sevens? Oh my God! <laughs> you got a seven cent cart. You need one of our catch cans. Give it at you. Oh, your catch can! If it wasn't for this catch can, wouldn't the skinnies be a limiting factor in stopping too? You're right, <clears throat> Alex. I have an NA13 manual. I've watched your build series, and I have an extra extra questions. <laughs> What X pipe would you get? <laughs> well, let me tell you this, Jay Wilson. A three inch Bassani X pipe is totally different than a three inch Cook's X pipe or a three inch Pipes X pipe. Bro, it doesn't fucking matter, man. I love you, bro. After the headers. You could fucking make your own X-Pipe. <laughs> it doesn't... <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Like, come on, man. <laughs> A triple helix. <laughs> he said triple X-Pipe. Put an O-Pipe on it. Why are we going with X's? Why don't we go to O-Pipes and have a large... A, a mini Hadron Collider? And maybe the particles bouncing from each other can make a time travel happen and accelerate... Your, look, man. It doesn't matter. I love you. And yes, a PMAS cold air intake always. <laughs> I love you. He goes, PMAS intake and inch and seven eighths headers. Yes, inch and seven eighths headers, PMAS intake. Who gives a fuck about a fucking X pipe brand? Get whichever one you can afford. What was it called on that live way back? Late Sunday peasant chats are lit. Quadruple X pipe for the win. Alex, where's the crankcase pressure sensor mounted on the Grey Goose? Did you not watch my last video? I thought you were a fan, Nitrous and Bias Plies. Did you not watch my last video? Well, guess what? We're going to go there. Uh, why the fuck did I do that? I am so stupid. If you watch my last video, it shows you right on the video where we measure crankcase pressure. I can't believe you don't know which one it was. So here it is. Watch the Grey Goose video that I posted on uh, Friday <clears throat> or whatever. Boom, 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 boom. Here we go. Look at that. Holy shit. So, <clears throat> let me go live. Here we go. And again, I'm being very um, general about that horsepower. Uh, this is where the oil cap would normally go, I think. And this is where the PCV system normally on stock cars would make. By the way, <clears throat> did you guys notice? The Grey Goose has drive by wire. This is a 100 and three millimeter Edelbrock throttle body, AKA Nick Williams shit. So this sensor right over here is crankcase pressure. Make its way into the manifold, but because this is not, you know, street stuff, they are very aggressive with getting rid of the crankcase pressure. So a lot of people said, Alex, do I need that? I wanna be honest with you guys, a lot of you guys don't need this up until, you know, close to 900 or plus horsepower. And again, I'm being very um, general about that. And by the Questions way, about let's look at Brian Luna's Mexico. car. This is Brian Luna's car. Originally, Chris. This car went sixes with a stock throttle body. This is a stock throttle body, pendejos. So the next time you talk to me about porting, the next time you talk to me about anything, I'm going to show you Brian Luna's car with a stock ass throttle body making 2,000 horsepower. Please stop the bullshit. Thank you. Anyway, the crankcase pressure sensor is on the actual oil uh, fill cap thing that vents out to, that vents out to, to the tank. 
Edelbrock equipped Mustang Go Sixes. Gen 3 stock bottom end. Will horsepower recommendation. A single turbo Gen 1 MT82. Oh, come on, stop it. SpaceX it, pipe is the one you. That's good. SpaceX pipe. Shout out to PK, Ben Calamar, and Lund for helping me out with my car. Car is awesome. As fuck, says the walls. Alex just picked up a 24 GT 10 or 80 a few days ago. Sorry about that. And I love it. I never got to drive a ride S197, but better ride over my old Fox body over a new way. Triple X is what you need for Alex to go 12 G. Boost don't care about porting. At what power level should you consider a drag pack? Uh, when you want to go drag racing and you want lightweight wheels. It's not a power level thing. I like the D-Pipe preferably. Makes great sounds on the rear end. That's pretty funny. You may have touched on this, but what are your goals for your Gen 1? I've already touched on it on many, many things. It's going to be a low 9 second car, 920, 91. I don't want to go into the 8th because the moment you go into the 8th, you need a parachute and you need a cage. This car, if I make the right calls and paperwork, I should be able to go 90 at 149 without needing a cage or anything like that. Question is, when Alex opens the door to his studio, is he outside? <laughs> Put a NASCAR boom tomb on it. But Alex, VMP showed a video of it picking up 40 horsepower with nothing but a throttle body, 100% cap. Unless it was pulled for 20 PSI and then they went stock to a mono. I swapped manifolds on my truck. I have a catch kit on the passenger side. That thing had half a pint of oil inside the intake. Isn't a ghost cam just as ricer as a bubble tomb? Yes. Yes. Did you think I was going to say no? I have a catch can on the passenger side and it's vented and it doesn't recirculate. I'm thinking about putting just a breather on the driver's side. No, catch can because the breather will leak and eventually drip on your cam cover. Love the channel. Not only do you keep getting more Coyote stuff, but I'm learning some Spanish as well. Alex, my lady, asked me, why am I yelling bitch -o? sometimes? Dylan, you don't remember the name of the video? Um, Try out the spray yet? No, I have not had time. I need to hurry up and get a Lun 2 for my Auto 13. Hey, look, I have an Auto 13. Anyone that gets an Auto Gen 1, I'm going to vet the shit out of that file, and I'm probably going to make that the base file. I'm going to say, hey, Junior, this one shifts 6R80, 315 gears, bone stock car. This one shifts at 127, 200, 234, 7500. And verified, vaya con Dios, see you later. Alex stays at Circus Circus. You're not wrong. Uh, so... You're telling me forcing air into a car isn't changed if the throttle body is wider? What blows my mind is that a stock throttle body flows forced enough air to run sixes. It is not a restriction. The reason we run a 103 on ours is the motor. I think we wanted to just have an e a, a, a easier, more area because we're going to shove 50 pounds of boost through it so that the blade weight and everything actually is favorable. Whereas a stock one, believe it or not, I don't think it's a restriction and I don't think Brian would gain. Aldo, stock throttle body. Brian, stock throttle body. Both cars are on the cusp of running sixes. NA is different. Yeah, but it's stupid to have a 100 millimeter throttle body NA or a ported stock throttle body, when you can probably, behind it, make the motor process air more efficiently. Cams, different intake manifold, different cam phasing, fuel, octane, da 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 How far do you think the Gen 1 motor will last? I'm betting 850. Oh, it's going to be interesting. I think the Gen 1 motor is going to start showing issues at high 700s. The person who yelled, ooh, will, in the background of your IG story had me dying. That is Brandon. Can you start over? I had to do dad things. Alex is on. Alex is the, Alex, <clears throat> the difference in 355 gears, 323 substantial? No, not that substantial. Limited to pump gas. Do you think a Gen 3 Auto would be quicker than a C6 both on pump gas with superchargers? Fuck no, you're going to get donkey stomped if the C6 is supercharged. Why? Lower compression, bigger displacement, Lighter car. Lower compression. Bigger displacement. Lighter car. Not that difficult. I have a UPR Whipple specific catch can and one-way breather oil cap. Is it weird to have no oil or fruit? Yeah, it's very weird to have no oil or fruit in the catch can. Something's wrong. When I did my oil change, is there a way to make sure it sucks? I don't know. Buy it a purse. <laughs> Go to Michael Kors. Buy the most expensive handbag they got and see if it starts to suck. Ghost Cam 2 985, they said, it'll be good, they said. 
Bull fucking shit. Be ready for codes. <laughs> no goals getting tuned on Earth has ever caused codes. Sorry, you got other issues. Great Goose did great at Texas 2K, but it'd be cool to see an in-car video of senior Alex. Mi ama me jura por mi vida que eres mi apa. Sale de tu... John 97 says, Mi ama, I think that's my mother, me jura por mi vida que eres mi papa, my father. Salí de sus huevos hace los 26 años. What, who, what's your, I'm 46. I might have a straight kid or two, but I haven't. In my in my early, in my 20s, I was not, I never, I never nutted in my first girlfriend ever, which is crazy. After that, everyone got the jizz. Everyone got it. They got filled up. Click, mm, click. You know how the pump stops when you, <laughs> shit was clicking after that relationship. C6 is the hand of God. Corvette's also got maximum arrow. Is the factory you see in the Grey Goose, a Gen 1, Gen 2. C6 is 3,300 or so. Gen 3 is almost 3,900. Exactly. That sounds amazing, too. Since my 13 will remain bone stock for the majority of my driving purposes, I remember when you said Gen 1 Coyotes are the Fox Body 5.0 of, of today. But learning from your content. Thank you so much. Johnny Trance says, I have a Roush axle back and an air raid intake. Can I beat a Z06? <laughs> no. Where do you get your energy from? I love it. I am young at heart. I eat clean. I work out five times a week. I, I have a lot of energy. I don't do stupid shit. I'm generally a healthy person, and I have good energy for a guy that's 46 years old. I mean to check if it's working correctly. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea how to make it. Make sure you work. it's working correctly. Alex, my wife doesn't suck. What should I do? Buy her a purse. Uh, for a boost setup, a ported Gen 3 manifold or Boss 302, both will do the same thing. I think it's just a looks thing at that point. Alex, pull out game weak as fuck. No, no, no. After my first girlfriend... Everyone, because I'm like, I don't care. This is your baby. De para mierda. Alex, lost son watching his shit. Alex, what do you think about the new point six point eight liter Mustang? DI in the P. Alex spending that money on plan B. Oh, and plan B omelets are the crunchiest, best omelets on the planet. Always has to hear about Alex giving bitches the baby gravy. Why not 410 instead of 373s? If your red line is 7,500, doesn't drink, no drinking, no smoking. I'm out of here. We're back. More to more, we're back. We're going to be back doing shows Tuesday. Next show, Monday. Dropping a video, a private Fox Body meetup that I think you guys are going to be, you're going to love the cars on that. Dude, they had free tacos. The little free taco truck. Ridiculous, great little car show I went to with a group of guys that are successful. Talked that shit, hung out with them, was a great time. So be on the lookout for notchback videos, 13 Mustang GT videos. I have a new video up comparing a stock tune versus a lunch tune. It went from a 13.1 to a 12.8 tune only on the screen. So be on the lookout for that. Share, subscribe, like, watch the Street Alpha podcast. Hopefully we're going to do a part two on that podcast. But again, we're back. We're going to be doing shows nonstop with one. I need to get that Viper, okay? I need to pay for this fucking motor on the GT500. I need to get the Fairmont in the sevens with the Turbo Coyote. I got a lot of shit going on and cooking this summer. And hopefully you guys will be along to uh, help me out and achieve all those goals. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you for hanging in on the Peasant Chat on a late Sunday. I'll be back on Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Talking Shit Tuesday. Have a good rest of your night. I'll see you guys later. Bye.